Welcome back to episode five of the Moneyball Card Podcast. I'm Ryan with Breakout Cards, and we're here with Jordan from the Sports Card Analytics. And today we're going to be taking a look at some factors that cause cards to go up in value. So today I'm going to be taking a look at baseball. Jordan is going to be looking at basketball. We have some data behind card prices, and we're going to be talking about that. Super excited for that. But first, before we dive deep into the data, we're going to talk about two cards that we picked up this past week. So last weekend I was in Boston. I recorded a card show vlog. Make sure to check that out after this. And I picked up this one Soto from 2018. Now this is his rookie year, although it is not technically a rookie card. This is still a prospect card, but this is numbered to 125 as a shimmer. And the reason why I picked this up is there is no real comps on this card. And I felt it was a good deal for the value. I paid, I think it was about 120 or $130 for this. There was a gold PSA nine, which is number to 50 that went for 350 or 400, but there's no comps based around this serial number or the shimmer. So I took a gamble on it at 120 and I'm going to leverage this into a trade for a nice vintage card. A lot of new modern dealers have a few vintage cards off the side and Juan Soto is super liquid. So I'm going to try to leverage that into a big trade. So Jordan, what did you pick up this past week? Um, so I know I showed off my, my Pokemon cards, uh, last week and I'm, I'm going to go even more out into, into the left field with this one. So this, this purchase in Pokemon, you have, you have Charizard that people recognize. Um, and, uh, in magic, you have the black Lotus, Yu-Gi-Oh, there's the blue eyes, white dragon, um, Fortnite. Did you get Fortnite? Fortnite, I actually have made a lot of money off Fortnite. <laughs> uh, Fortnite has the Black Knight, but I did not get the I did not get Fortnite cards because of Fortnite. Uh, when when Fortnite cards first came out, uh, I bought uh, some promo cards and I bought one sealed box, and I I had more ordered, but I canceled those orders. I ended up selling the the eight promo cards for five thousand uh, dollars. So I was like, okay, I need, I need to learn from this. What can, what can I learn from this? So Digimon cards came out uh, this past year and I was like, what is, what is the, uh, I think it's Black Knight. Uh, what is the Charizard of, of Digimon? And it's, it's Omnimon. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Omnimon is, uh, is the Charizard of Digimon cards. These, these are new, this is a new trading card game. That came out. I bought some sealed wax of it. Uh, I bought these uh, for about a hundred dollars a piece and a graded PSA ten. They actually sell for around um, like six hundred dollars. So it's it's not bad. Uh, but I, I've told myself I'm going to get multiple of of the next Charizard for whatever set comes out. If I really believe in the set, and I I did. I did grow up watching Digimon and all the other stuff, all the nerdy stuff. So I made my money off Fortnite. I, I'm not going to miss out on Digimon. It could just completely tank. Um, if it does, I'll just learn how to play the card game and and play against uh, people in my in my house. But hopefully these go up uh, over the, the next year or so. Have you seen any Digimon cards at any card shows? So actually funny enough, someone was talking about it at the national. They're like, oh, I should have picked up the sealed wax at Digimon. And <laughs> I'll be completely honest, man. I don't know anything about Digimon. I've never heard of it before until <laughs> someone posted on Twitter talking about it at the national. They're like, oh, someone had Digimon cards here. Like, I don't know what that I saw a few people posting sealed cases actually this week on Twitter as well. Um, again, I don't know Digimon at all. I'm not into the anime stuff or anything like that. I don't know about that stuff. Growing up, I watched mostly baseball games um, and a few other shows as well, like Pawn Stars all the time and American Pickers. But well, what what I learned from Fortnite was get get some sealed wax of the first set, um, get some of the promo card, the first promo cards that come out, and try to get the the top card uh, of the of the first set. So I did all of that. So all right, great pivot point. So now we're going to take a look at some of the data behind card values. Today, I'm taking a look at baseball. Jordan is going to be taking a look at basketball. So first off, I guess I should start off with baseball and uh, some of the different conclusions I started coming up with. Um, so let me share my screen real quick. One of the things I wanted to kind of compute this week was what had a bigger impact on a player? Was it modern war, like what they had for a current season? Was it their career war? 
or was it the Google search volume? Because I've heard a lot of different arguments from people talking about, okay, a player is worth X amount if they've done well in the past and they're on a Hall of Fame trajectory. I've heard people saying, oh, it's only current stats that a player is worth X amount of money. And then I've also heard a lot of people talking about the popularity of a player. Uh, price should correlate to the popularity. The more popular a player, the more expensive it should be. And I really think it should be, or at least before looking at the data, I should say, I would have thought it was a mixture of all three, uh, but the results were kind of surprising. So for this data that I grabbed over here on the side, I looked at the top 100 players uh, this year by war. Again, some players are injured. Some players don't have rookie cards. Some of them don't have a lot of PSE 10 cards out there, especially let's say they're a 2021 rookie. Um, the people aren't getting their PSA 10s back right now, especially if they did a bulk order for these cards. So not everyone is on this list, but I ended up doing 54 or I should say 53 different players. And they range from 7.5 war at the time I did the stats from Shohei Otani all the way down to three war of Joey Votto. So uh, three war is usually about all-star level three to four. It just really depends from year to year. Obviously, this is still in the middle of the season, so by the end of the year, these stats are either going to go up a little bit or down, depending on how a player performs, um, but that's how I grabbed all these, and I also, I grabbed the career war of a player, so war compiles year after year, just like a stat like RBIs or home runs, and on average, a Hall of Famer has 65 war, so just keep that in the back of your mind when you take a look at some of these stats. Now, for search volume... I used a tool called SEMrush and it gives me the monthly search volume of a person. So um, I type in a keyword or a phrase, it'll tell me how many times a month people search this on Google. So I use that as the reference point. I looked at recently sold comps on eBay and if there was multiple in a frequent time range, I ended up averaging those out and was getting these prices over here. So you can see what they are going for. And then on the side, we'll go over these charts a little bit later and what they really mean uh, for their values. So end up doing all this. You can see this over here, compiled it right here into this table in the spreadsheet. And we'll start talking about the PSA 10 value versus 2021 war. So um, we got a R squared value of 0 0.03, which is really low. If you don't know what R squared is, it's a coefficient of determination. What that really tells you is if two different uh, variables are related to each other. So in this case, whether the PSA 10 value was related to the 2021 war value of a player and being a 0 0.003, that, that means there's no correlation. And I have a few reasons why I kind of believe there is no correlation behind this based off of this list. Um, but let me kind of show you at the chart. So first off, you can see over here, the 2021 war we have this card right over here that's worth almost $1,000. If you scroll down over here, that is Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw got hurt during the season. So if he wasn't hurt, he would be a lot farther right with the war. Um, obviously, he's one of your top 10 pitchers in baseball right now, even later in his career, won multiple Cy Young Awards in place for the Dodgers. So he really has a lot going for him. He's been a great pitcher, but because of that injury, you can see that there's this data point all the way over here. Then all the way to the right at 7.5, you have Otani. His crises are really, really high for the current season, but he's performing well. So it's expected if you wanted this model to go uh, appropriately. There's a few other players over here as well. You can see um, like right here at 3.75 over $250. So that one on here, if I filtered actually by here, let me do this real quick. Oops. Filter Z to A. So you can see Scherzer on here is at 4.5 at 500. So that's this outlier on the graph. At 430, we have DeGrom who got hurt. He's, I mean, for how long he's been hurt, he had a 5.4 war, really good. But that's way out here compared to how this is built out. And then over here at that value at 300, we have Mookie Betts. And Mookie Betts has had a great career. DeGrom's had a great career. Scherzer has had a great career. And Clayton Kershaw has a great career. However, the stats from right over here showing that these top uh, 54 players, there is really no correlation. Now, if I was going to do this over again, maybe I'd want to look at maybe the top 25 players and see if there's a better correlation. Actually, I could probably do this live right now. 
Um, let's actually see if that makes an impact. So let's go back over here and we'll filter by the war over here. And we're gonna recreate this. So over here, we'll do insert chart. So we'll see if the top 25 do a little bit better. Let me zoom out a little bit. So it built this out as well for the top 25 players rather than 54. And you can see the R squared valued actually went up, but I mean, you can really see how crazy some of these prices are. Um, you can see Otani literally follows the trend line exactly with war and price. Uh, but Scherzer are all the way up here at 500 for 4.5 is way above. And also you can see over here at five um that was the grom again really high so the problem with how this is built out is you need to have past war and past experience in the league factor in your price you can't just look at the current year and expect it so the next thing i looked at um over here was the search volume to see if relevant searches had a correlation to the value of a player because if a player is done well in the past people are going to be searching them more they're going to be a fan he's been around he's been established um if he's been traded multiple fan bases like mookie bets you have people in boston they're going to keep up with mookie bets or still like him as a player you know people in la as a dodgers a dodgers fan they're going to be looking up mookie bets and i found an r squared value of 0 0.186 so there was some correlation but it wasn't fully accurate and you can see right here the exception right here was the $960 value, and that is Clayton Kershaw. For some reason, people aren't searching, searching up Clayton Kershaw that much. Um, don't know why, but you can see how far off he is compared to a lot of the data. Over here, uh, I believe that was Mookie Betts at 300. I can double check right here and double check that. And you can see that is Mookie Betts, and he almost follows the trend line based off of searches and everything along the lines with that. I have to look at the other ones too. I think they are Scherzer and also Jacob deGrom way above here under some of these batters have performed extremely well. I mean, you can see over here by search volume, if we did this by Z to A, Mookie Betts is searched the most. He has 301,000. Next, you have Bryce Harper at 201,000. So there's over 100,000 people that search Mookie Betts a month over Bryce Harper. Aaron Judge is about the same at 200,000. Then you have Tatis, and then you have Kershaw. Um, although there's over 100,000 is Otani, Freeman, and Arenado. And I think at least the search volume would be very comparable to how popular a player is. People obviously are going to search stats more often, trying to look up more information about the player. But those are the ones that were all over 100,000. Our squared value was 0 0.186. So I knew I was going in the right direction, that there was some sort of correlation. Obviously, there's some outliers based off of the data. But I want to take it a step farther. So uh, one thing that should be impact past performance. So next that I computed was a career war versus the PSA 10 price. And this is where the data started really lining up. So you can see over here, I plotted all the PSA 10 values. I created the trend line and you can see it, um, it's a 0 0.456 for the R squared valued. So comparing it to the 0 0.186 and 0 0.003, Definitely in the right track looking at career war. Again, there's some outliers like all the way up here for career war and value. We have Kershaw. And over here at $500, we have Max Scherzer. But the thing about it as well, if you think about it, how it should scale, you have your elite players. They are going to be way, way higher than even like your average Hall of Famer. And Kershaw is your elite pitcher for this generation. The last 20 years, I mean, you could say Verlander has been great. He has been, but Kershaw is on a, absolutely another level. And he still has a lot more left in his career. He's only, what, 32 or 33 years old. And he's putting up really, really great stats years after years. Has a few Cy Young awards. He's going to hit a lot of milestones. And he might have a chance at 300 wins as well. So that's why he's way above. And Scherzer, you just hit 3,000 strikeouts. So his prices are a little bit higher. I bet if I went back a little bit before 3,000 strikeouts, it would fall more in line with this trend line. And not saying Scherzer is an elite pitcher because he might win his fourth Cy Young this year. Um, but at the same age, compare him uh, what he's done compared to Kershaw. 
Kershaw still has a lot more years left in his career as well. But I found it really interesting talking about the career war versus this current year versus the search volume. Now, one of the things I eventually want to do is build out a stat based around both search volume and career war and throw in a few other things as well, like milestones. But that's going to be later down, maybe a few more episodes when I can really deep dive into this and try to increase that R squared value. But you can see right here, career war is a better indicator right now than search volume. And it is a lot better indicator than what someone is doing in a current season. Buy off of past results. Don't buy off of hype. So would I be able to use, let's say, this uh, career war to uh, try to find um, steals in the, the sports card market? Like if the uh, the value is below that trend line? Yeah, I believe so. Um, right now, if we talked about career war versus values, I'd have to load up Zach Greinke on here. I know he's kind of weird with his cards. He has a 2004 uh, tops that some people consider rookie. And then he also has a 2002 Bowman. It's super low pop, but um, I'd have to load them up over here. He's a really high war comparison to what some of his card prices are, especially at least raw. Another one, which would probably under here, I bet you this is uh 59.7. So let's see who's at 59.7 right now. So we'll go over here, Z to A. So Joey Votto and Buster Posey are those two right here. So you can see that based off of that trend line. Buster Posey, I mean, as a catcher, having 56.7 war, winning, I think what's what, three World Series championships with the Giants, playing for one team his entire career. Big market as well. I mean, 220 for a PSA 10 value seems like a pretty good value. Again, he's a catcher. That could be a whole nother discussion. And then Vado. Vado's an interesting case because advanced analytics really favor Vado, but your traditional stat heads don't like Vado because he doesn't hit career milestones. He walks a lot, which kind of messes with his hits totals. So Vado's kind of an interesting case, but $150 is the same exact year as Kershaw. I mean, you're talking about what a six to seven X price difference between the two cards. The same year as Scherzer as well. I believe they all have 2008 rookies. You're talking about a three X price difference right now. So Votto probably is pretty undervalued. Right. But at the end of the day, popularity does matter. The way people yes. perceive players, it does matter. And I see Votto's search volumes, uh, what one third of, uh, Kershaw. So, yeah. So you can see, interesting enough though, too, Scherzer, his popularity isn't as much as Kershaw as well. So, if you're building out a stat or if you're building out stats in the future, we we'll definitely want to have to take a look at both the search volume and also your career war because I personally believe you need to have both of those into something. You need to have both the stats, but you also need to have popularity with them. You can't just single isolate the popularity of a player and buy off the popularity. And you can't just go look at career stats and just buy off of that. You have to have a mixture of both. And it was funny enough too, when I did that other chart over here, based off of the PSA 10 versus 2021 war, look at the trend line. It's actually downwards. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice that at first, but I, it just shows you like, you can't take this value over here, the PSA 10 value versus the current year and just expect that as a singular variable to look at a card price. There's more to it than just that. So when people tell you to buy off the hype, if you're looking to flip a card in a week or so, yeah, you can buy off the hype. But if you're looking for something that holds its value, it's not going to. Last thing about Vado, real quick, I wanted to add that in here before. Wow. Um, there's some concerns the last two or three years if he actually would hit that 65 war threshold because he has been declining. He is an older player. So that could also be factoring into that $150 value compared to Scherzer and Kershaw, just because people don't think he might hit that Hall of Fame threshold. But there's also been obviously the new analytics movement as well. And a few people in the analytics movement are really, really pushing Joey Votto. So it's that it's that argument between the old school thinking and the new school thinking, what's really going to happen. And he might not be a first ballot Hall of Famer. So for, for NBA, um, I like to use the NBA uh, all-star votes uh, to kind of gauge popularity and compare this to rookie prices uh, for PSA 10, um, like Ryan did with baseball. Uh, 
with with the NBA and there being a, a change in ownership of the license over the past uh, decade or so, uh, it, it's kind of difficult to find a, the the perfect rookie card uh, for every single player and and compare and compare all of them. So we we used uh, the tops PSA ten and the, their prism rookie PSA ten. Um, if if it came up for a player, so the coefficient of determination uh, for for the uh, all star votes was 0.409, uh, and I think what really pulled it up was Steph Curry and his his rookie card being almost eleven thousand dollars, and that's that's one hundred percent popularity. I mean, he's a great basketball player, but it's it's really just popularity and the way he's changed the game and you know how every kid wants to be like Steph Curry. Just delete the stuff real quick on the screen. Okay. Well, 0. 0.54 is a lot better. But yeah. So yes, Steph is Steph is changing the NBA and uh he's affecting our card market as we speak. So what we can learn from this, and I know you guys are looking at this and you just see a bunch of dots and uh, it, you see us talking about it. But what can you what you can learn from this is uh, when the all star votes come in, uh, you can take a look at the, the top prices. And this this line does kind of correlate with rookie card prices. It's not perfect. Uh, there is no perfect stat. And a lot of people are undervalued because Steph Curry and guys like LeBron are, are pulling this trend line up. Um, but we we do have guys like Jokic who are overlooked uh, and Embiid. These are these are big men, and there is a a hobby myth that big men uh, aren't good investments, and they they could possibly be pulling this this trend line down. Um, but the the other stat I wanted to look at is like it's a stat that's kind of like war for for baseball. And I know a lot of people depend on war when they like to value a player and they don't really think of that when it comes to basketball in the NBA. Uh, so I found a, an advanced stat called value over replacement player. And just like war, this value grows over a player's career. So you won't see someone like uh, Luka Doncic here in the top 25 because he just hasn't played long enough. Uh, he was he was ranked in like the, the 45 to 50 range in this. So I, I was kind of surprised. And I know people were going to be like, well, where's Luka? And uh, if he was here, it definitely would throw the line off a little bit. Uh, and you'll see the coefficient of determination is isn't as perfect as it was with with popularity and all-star votes and and their careers and we know the nba market isn't necessarily watching guys careers progress uh they if i if i was able to get uh the values of the top 100 which i didn't have here uh i think it would be a lot more skewed because you would have people uh, reacting over one great year, a little bit more digging, but it would be cool to see, you know, how people react to just that hot player. And we know in the NBA, they, uh, the NBA market's a lot different and they do react to the popular player one week or one month or however long they are, they are hot. Um, but I, I wouldn't go to this, this, uh, value over replacement player and, say oh wow he's this this guy's being way overlooked i think his his value should be higher this this isn't necessarily a great stat to to go to to try to find that uh that undervalued card in the card market i would actually go to all-star votes before i would go to this because uh, you, you see where people are putting their vote in the players that they like to watch the players that they want to be like yeah and the thing about baseball too. So if you guys don't know how baseball all-star game voting works, people can't actually vote for pitchers. So our in the league, and that's why I did search volume over uh, the all-star game appearances now, or all-star game votes. Now I could take a look at the all-star game votes and only look at the batter side of things. But again, I mean, you're kind of skewing it because now you don't have the pitchers in there. And if you want to like an accurate representation of the entire league, 
that's why I went with searches rather than that. It definitely makes sense. And uh, this, uh, this value of a replacement isn't, it's not perfect uh, by all means. And it's, it's not something I'm going to be going to, uh, to, to look up players to see what their value is. It, it's just a metric that's out there. And there's other, there's other analytics based companies that are trying to build their own metrics. Everyone's trying to find a way to value a player and, and basketball is just really difficult. It's, it's not exactly like baseball. Uh, so we're, I feel like we're in the beginning stages of like Moneyball was uh, for the Oakland A's with the NBA. We're, we're still tr- we're still learning and we're and we're we're still trying to to grow a, a value. And me and Ryan, we're we're on this show. We're going to try to put together our own statistics or, or metrics uh, to try to value players. Because if if we can come up with something that uh, the trend line uh, relates to a lot more. Um, you know, we'll start using that for for the card industry. Um, but but right now, this just shows how the beginning stages that we are for the NBA. And it would be interesting to see the the NFL. I know they have the QBR to rate quarterbacks, wow. um, but but not really a, a stat that can put every player. You can't put like a a offensive center. You can't compare them to to a quarterback or a wide receiver. It's just it's just too difficult. Um, Let's see. Like that's something that we're going to be testing week after week. I mean, you're going to see how we develop these stats and come to our conclusions as you do more research, but it might boil down to, you have to create your own stats based off the player. I mean, you might have to break up baseball into two different types of categories, whether just looking at pitchers itself and then looking at also hitters and then developing a formula, just the base of price based off of production and then popularity. As you saw, both of them had a uh, positive correlation based off of search volume and also career war. So same with basketball. I'm obviously, I don't know basketball as much, but what you're talking about are those two players that were kind of undervalued based off of the all-star game uh, votes and also kind of production value the last two years or so, or it was what Nick Jokic or Jokic or something like that. (laughs) Uh, Guys, I don't follow basketball at all. So (laughs) (laughs) I look like a noob here, but that's not my sport. Yeah. Just, just about all these, uh, all the big guys, uh, Dwight Howard, Marcus Saul, uh, there's Jokic. Jokic actually is so, kind of up there, but we have yeah, the big guys. Who's Andre Iguado or something like that? I don't even know, man. He's thirty one dollars, <laughs> and I'm looking at everyone around him: eight hundred fifty three, a thousand nine sixty six, five twenty one, two oh nine. Seems way uh, out of place. Um, Andre Iguodala, he he's been in the league for for a long time uh he kind of was a, a star for the 76ers they were calling him ai too uh he just wasn't able to carry a team through the playoffs so he found a role with the uh the golden state warriors and he he won a, a few championships with them uh, and he won finals mvp uh, just being like a, a secondary player so while he's very efficient people just didn't really flock to his his rookie cards so so it makes sense uh that andre gudal is is only 31 dollars uh I, I can't see him doing much more in his career to really boost that value um but he's definitely a an overlooked player other guy too was al horford 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 yeah when i when i think of uh overlooked players uh just in general uh, al horford's one of them, like if you're playing NBA 2K, you can go get Al Horford uh, pretty easily. <laughs> All these guys who are are very low valued, like Paul Millsap too. He's another big man. Uh, same with Al Horford. They're they're both power forwards. And uh, if if we looked into the myth right now, right this second, if yeah, you can't make money off uh, big guys. Uh, it looks like the the myth would pass, except for someone like Jokic who. He, he doesn't play like a guard, but he, he passes like a guard. He runs an offense like a guard from the center position. Uh, but he's the only one that does that in the NBA. So he's kind of a one-off and an outlier. So Now, just out of curiosity, what's the VORP for Michael Jordan? Or like so a I, I, I left this to just current players. It, it did have all players uh, – all the way through like the seventies. And he, he was up there with LeBron. 
Um, I just wanted to take, I just want to leave the current players because I didn't oh, want yeah, there yeah. to be an argument about who the goat was based off some metric. Uh, so, so yeah, I wanted to leave it with, with current players, uh, but I, I could look that up right now. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. So like with baseball side of things right now, number one, I believe is Babe Ruth. Then it's Barry Bonds and Walter Johnson. I think, let me look up the top all-time war leaders. I was a little bit off. So all-time war leaders, number one is Ruth. So I got that. Number two is Walter Johnson. Three is Cy Young. And then four is Barry Bonds. So I was a little bit off. I knew Cy Young was up there. I thought he was after Barry Bonds. Uh, so I flipped those two. But I mean, the difference, with, I'm taking a look at baseball references, 162.7 to 163.6. So it's, I mean, at that point, it's so marginal. And uh, here's the the career value over replacement player, if anyone wanted to. Interesting. So Stockton is three on warp. Right. So you, you can definitely see it, it, it helps players uh, who have long careers. Um, it, it would be cool to, to have a metric that you could look at like yearly. Um, but yeah, this is saying LeBron James is uh, the GOAT. So. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can you guys can fight about it in the comments. I'm not going. I'm going to see everyone fighting at number three for Stockton. I know people are going to be like, "Oh, Magic Johnson," or "Oh, Larry Bird," or "Oh, Kobe Bryant." But Stockton at three, I didn't think about that one. Yeah, and I guess it would it would favor guys who have the ball more, which would be someone like Stockton, uh, a point guard. So, so yeah, definitely interesting stat. Um, you guys let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we're going to be diving into other advanced analytics uh, like this in the future and comparing them to card prices. And may, who knows, maybe one day we can find a perfect stat that uh, that just correlates perfectly with the, the card market and the actual players play. Um, I, actually, I'm lying. We're not going to find a perfect stat. We're going to no create perfect- it. We're going <laughs> to create it. We're, yeah, maybe there's one out there, uh, but there's there's a flaw for for everything, and we just have to point out the strengths and weaknesses of of every stat um, that we review. And I hope that you guys find this helpful. And um, let us know in the comments uh, your the the sports that you enjoy and and that you look up uh, because i know we talk about baseball um and and basketball and sometimes nfl if there's other sports that we're missing uh and and there's advanced analytics for it just put in the comments and and we'll be sure to to add that to an episode in the future absolutely and like i said we're going to keep going and try to figure this out along with you guys so make sure to watch every episode over time as we learn more data and uh, we're always going to be researching. I mean, we're reading books, we're watching YouTube videos and trying to get better at the side of things. There's not much resources out there, at least with like the sports card side of things. With normal sports, there's a ton of advanced analytics and notes and information that's getting published right now. I mean, this is the golden age for that, but no one's applying it to cardboard. All right, guys, we, we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, make sure you go buy some Digimon cards. And if you lose money on it, don't blame me. Uh, and... Uh... You guys have a great day. We'll see you on the next episode. See you there. I think that could be an interesting one, comparing players with similar markets. I think also it's a kind of like a historic, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it, it, it'd be good to either find players that are on the same playing field, or equal. Or I mean, guys, guys move all the time. Like uh, I talked about with Lonzo Ball, going from the like top market to uh, the second lowest market up to the third highest market. Like his, we could see how his values have done uh, since then. I mean, that's that's cool. How many states have you have you hit this year? So so far, I've hit up like twelve, eleven or twelve. And you've been to 30 plus shows? I've been to 39 so far. What I was trying to do is I was trying to figure out how we can add the career war with the search volume. And I can't to come up with a new stat. Is if we do, we'll just do over a calculator real quick. 
So like if we did 69 times 69, that's four, seven, which is not there. We'll do another one real quick to see what that equals. That's three. So it might have to be to the third power. We'll insert another one to the right. Try this out real quick. Or actually, we'll try this one out because it didn't really matter. I don't know. We got to play around with it a lot. So plus C2 times C2 times C2. So that's 463. Does that really goes towards that? Oh, look at that. That's 0.64 now. Who's our outlier way over there? Kershaw. Who's that right there? So that's a 260 value. We'll filter this Z day. Mookie bets undervalued, which I 100% agree with. Who's the guy that's overvalued? Aaron Judge is undervalued based off of his career war and popularity, which makes sense. He gets a lot of searches, but he has a low war. The Grom, the Grom's the outlier, right? No, oh yeah, he's the outlier. What if we took out the Grom? Let's see. Look at that, 0.67. If we took him out, we might be getting somewhere with that. Yeah, that's that's valuable. That's very valuable. So I think that's something we'll talk about next week. I think the other thing we have to add in there is awards. 